But in chapter 4 tonight, I'd like to preach on are you tired of the fight? God gave me this message out in Oklahoma. I preached it nowhere but there. But I, I got up and preached to my friends. You know, with my friends. One of them came and, and told me, said, I, I'd like to come to your camp meeting. And then, when then I asked him if he, I had some real nice rooms in the Ramada Inn. And he said, could I, I pay for my own room. Could I, I just stay there by myself and, and maybe get down here and pray and, and get a hold of God? He said, you know, I ain't been in a camp meeting like this in 20 years. This man quit. Are you listening? There's men in here this week been down there talking to me. You want to quit. You want to quit. One man said, uh, I- I'm just working too much. Quit. Just quit working. God called you to preach. One man said, I- I've got a school and it's driving me crazy. Hauling kids down 12 miles. There's another school just just haul them down to them and keep on preaching. If any sign stops you from preaching, it's of the devil. And that means that old stringy-headed wife you got too. Amen. Don't make no difference. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. Any, any more of you folks want to leave, leave. Now, I've got further going than y'all have. I'm going to drive to Houston when I get through preaching. I'm going to walk out, get in my car, it doesn't got the luck, and I'm going to drive it 1,200 miles. So now, if you need to go home or need to go to the bathroom, you got kidney trouble, go now. Amen. I'm going to preach. Amen. Amen. You say, I don't like that. I don't care. I drove 1,200 miles up and drive 1,200 miles home. I'm going to preach. Amen? You say, well, let's got the, the late shows on. It's done too late. You, ain't gonna need, you don't need to know how. Preach the Word and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering. That's where you need to do it. And doctrine. For the time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall heap to themselves preachers have an itch in ears. You don't say that. Said so teachers. Well, somebody to build up your intellect, and nobody to lay a man at your heart's door that you've got to be set to do what you've been taught. A preacher builds up your intellect and your faith to do what the preacher says. But this crazy, mixed up world hates preaching. And preachers do too. Preaching is hard work. Amen. You say, well, there's no hard work for me. You ain't doing it. They shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. You say, I thought we were going to shout it out tonight. Y'all shout it out Saturday night. Watch down all things. Endure affliction. Do the work. Work. Work, that dirty four-letter word in American language, work. That's the nastiest word in the English language. Church members don't like to do it. Nobody likes it. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. You know, I hear a lot of young men say, God called me to be an evangelist. Well, do the work. What is, I, I, I met one real evangelist, I know he's an evangelist, he's a real one. And he's, he's as black as a tie, he's as blind as a bat, and he's an old pimp and an old thief, and God saved him. And when God saved him, God called him to preach. But he wasn't blind then. And a prostitute run up there one day and dashed his face full of, uh, full of lies. Burned his eyes out. He kept standing on that preaching on that corner, and I said, "What? What did God call you to do?" He said, "God called me to be an evangelist." 
I said, do you ever leave Beaumont, Texas? He said, I ain't never been out of city limits. I said, why do you evangelize? He said, I was evangelizing. He wore a blue suit, had a gold chain. He dressed immaculate, one of the finest men you ever met in your life. He said, I evangelize in the jail. I evangelize on the street corner. I evangelize in the rest home. I evangelize wherever the sinner's at. He said, I am an evangelist. I said, I got a witness. There ain't nothing in this Bible about an evangelist going around and entertaining the saints. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, they know. I mean, somebody said, but boy, I just love to hear. Listen, this Bible said, make full proof. And bless God, if God calls you to be an evangelist, that means that God is going to win some lost people through you. Now, Bob Jones told me in person, I said, Dr. Bob, would you please, in the motel room, explain that God called you to be an evangelist. He said, God didn't uh, call, God called me, Jack. He said, to stir people up to win souls. He said, I win souls because I'm a Christian. He said, I stir all the people to win souls because I'm an evangelist. He had the proof too, buddy. Junior ain't got the proof, but he had the proof. You remember there in verse 7, I fought a good fight. My neighbor come up to me the other day. He was very religious. He was a Lutheran from Denmark. He got an old wife. That, that sucker's ugly as a moose. And, and I mean, got a personality like one too. Well, I mean, that, that's the wickedest woman I've ever seen in my life. That's the ugliest old woman I've ever seen in my life. She just walks around. She is, I, I mean, boy, she's just born ugly. Just eat up with it. You've seen people that way. That man said, uh, he said, preacher, he said, uh, why out here in Texas all these Baptists fight? I said, we like it. He said, but don't you think in the church uh, you ought to be reverent? I said, no. Paul said, fight is a fight. And the Baptist church, honey, is a fight. And you know what you're trying to get? You want everybody to be peaceful. Well, the Bible said they'll say peace, peace, when there ain't no. <laughs> there ain't going to be no peace. It's fight. This thing is a fight. This thing is a battle. And I'm enjoying it. I mean, all my life, I used to come home on Saturday night, my head be skin all up. And you know, I had an old bulldog. I loved that old brown dog. I called him brown. He slept in the bed with me. Ugly, stinkingest dog you ever seen in your life. And he'd come in Saturday night, and he'd been down in nigger town, and he didn't have no ears. One of his eyes was cut till his eyeball looked funny. And I'd tell him, Brownie, I love you. you my kind, boy. He likes to fight. he just see a cat and just kill him. That's why I love him. I've seen some guy up here running for a senator or something. I, saw, I told Betty Payne, I said, I wouldn't vote for him. She said, why? I said, look at his kids. Both of them got a cat apiece. I wouldn't vote for him. I hate him. I hate him. God knows I hate him. God knows I hate him. I had a missionary one time live in my house. And I told him, I said, you live there if you don't. But your wife can't bring that cat in. And, and my wife was in the hospital. And I let that missionary say that. And I come back and had a cat in my house. I said, get out of my house. You're your cat, too. Yeah. And I said, yeah, you're going to be scratched up now. I'm telling you, get, get on out of here. Don't get out of my house. do no cat in my house. You say, oh, I just love them. You, you, you're weird. Uh, you're so mad at I, I believe all demons possess. You ever notice them? He said, I fought a good fight. You ever notice why your husband calls you an old cat all the time? I finished my course. I kept the faith. You remember, you remember when you enjoyed the fight? You know, to be a fighter, I asked my dad one time, my dad, he's a, he's a fighting fanatic. I said, Daddy, who, who was one of the greatest fighters? He said, well, 
He, he said, I guess, Jack, he said, Bob Fitzsimmons was the most handicapped. He weighed 156 pounds when he won, won the champ of the world. He's the heavyweight champ of the world, weighed 156 pounds. They call him the freak of the ring. He fought Big Jim Jeffrey, 26 rounds, broke both his hands. Fought him 26 rounds. He said, he's the fighter. But he said, you know, he said, Jack, he said, you know, he said, Joe Lewis has something that nobody else could have. He said, you can knock him down, and he could get up and knock you out. There's a lot of Christians, when they get knocked down, they can't never get back up. They sit around and suck their thumb and say, you don't know what they've done to me. I, I'm telling you what they've done to me. They took my little trophy. I had to get for her that person. They didn't give it to me, and they gave it to her, and I ain't never going back. And I, I went down to a church, and they didn't like me. I ain't never been to a church where they liked me. So whatever I do, do whatever God tells me to do. And sometimes you don't tell me to do. I ain't going to blame you at all of it. I'm going to tell you something. If you're a fighter, you're going to have to have a trainer. Because you, 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 you live long enough to know something about it. Jack Dempsey got whipped in the corner. The greatest fighter that ever lived. But when he fought his manager... For S.L. Taylor, movie star, he got whipped, boy. Because he ain't no movie star can train no fighter. But he had a man in that corner that could train a fighter because he trained three of the greatest men ever climbed in the ring. Now, I know tonight we're talking about a spiritual war, and it's on tonight. It's on tonight. It's on tonight. So as evangelists and preachers, you know, they said the reason... That I didn't come down to say, look, you little old sissy, you. You call them up, tell them they got lace on their drawers. The reason they didn't come, they were afraid. They said, the reason I didn't come is because Dr. Ruckman stand on divorce or what well, Brother Jack, well, uh, 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 you ain't never been married before, have you? You've been preaching all week. The only way I didn't come here you. Huh? 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 Why didn't come here? Don Green. Huh? Why didn't come here? Don Green. Well, you say that, well, uh, you know, he preaches on them little uh, funny things. He didn't preach on glasses. You know what he preached on this week? Liberty in the Lord. Mm -hmm. why, why didn't they come? You can't take it, you little sissy. Your wife wouldn't let you come. That's why you didn't come. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinch that, pinch that baby down and get him walk out. Amen? Remember, remember when you enjoyed the fight. Well, I, I, just, I just remember where I used to live. The, the, about, about 30 pounds, 40 miles, maybe I were. Brother Danny Farley, probably they call it Casey's Ridge. Now, th them old boys up there, they was different. Must, all the hoodlums lived downtown. But if old Casey's Ridge, they cut pump wood for a living. Mm hmm. I mean, them old East Texas boys, I, all they ever did fight them rattlesnakes down there and them, and them, and them, and them big old mosquitoes. And they'd come into town, they'd just tear their shirt sleeves out. They'd just tear them out. Put their overalls on. I mean, they'd be stars tonight. And Saturday night, they'd come to town. They had a place called Club 66. Nobody in the insane people went in there. I mean, they had arms that big. They, they called them, them, when they was floating that pump, what they called them sticks. Is that thing around? You, you know what they hated worse than anything? Weed heads. Anybody comb their hair around the back. That's where I comb my Anybody wore the bitches way down low, that's the way I wore mine. Anybody wore the hat turned up in the front, they hated them. You know what? I didn't ever go out there. I just heard about it. One guy asked me one night, said, you want to go with me? I said, you got a cannon? He said, no. I said, forget it, man. That'll be Custer's last stand up there. No. I ain't even enjoy it. But hey! Hey! I got called into the battle of the law. And this Bible said, Hey! A good fight. And God said, Remember when you enjoyed it? Remember when you enjoyed it? You knew who your enemy was. You knew who your enemy was. Hey, we were his enemy. Remember? Remember when you got started? You enjoyed the fight! You knew who your enemy was? And you was his enemy. Nowadays, man, you talk to these people, you don't know who their enemy was. And they ain't enemy to nobody. 
We were all together on these issues. Whether it's doctrinal, or soul winning, or modernist, old Norman Vincent Peel, two or three more of the crowd need to be peeled. Amen? We, we all the dead. We all the dead. We pulled out of the Southern Baptist Convention for a lot less than what these independents are doing now. There's nothing cheap about the war that some of us have been in through the years. But we've enjoyed it. I've just literally enjoyed it. I was having a foot wash the other day. You don't believe in that. Well, I don't care if you believe in that. You ought to wash your stinking feet sometime. Though. But, you know, I, I was up here behind, behind the pulpit, you know, and there was a guy, it was a good while back, and, and it was a van that just happened to be visiting in our church. And uh, the Spirit of God just really spoke me. He was having the Lord's Supper, what we was doing. I have it every six, seven years. And so we was having the Lord's Supper. I let my wife talk me into it. And uh, we had it out being real reverent about it, you know. And, and, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, Wash old Bush's feet. So I went over and got me a bucket and run it for him. Got me a towel and I come in. We said, I got old Bush's boots, pull them off. I wash his feet. He said, that's a, that's a wicked sin. Why? Well, wash your feet if I want to. And I said, Lord, what do you want me? And, 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 and so the next service, I walked in about $500 worth of fishing equipment laying right up here. I said, what's all that fishing equipment doing up here? Big old boxes of And big old rods. I don't even know what they're for. I couldn't work one of them things. And they were. His brother was sitting right next to him. His brother was one of the best men in my church. And he said, how come he didn't wash my feet? And God the Holy Ghost said, because you ain't been doing nothing. You don't need your feet washed. And old Bush had been pushing them wheelchairs up and down the street and bringing them crippled and lame and main people in and getting them saved. And old Brother Bobby, Brother Bobby started home. And he said, you know why you're not a fisherman for the Lord? So you spend all your time fishing. And he done. I mean, he had a belt with a, with a fish on it. Had a hook on his collar. He had a hook everywhere. And he's hooked. That man laid that stuff on the altar. He started winning. It's still freezing up in here. But I mean, God, just God. Oh, shut your mouth. And wait till you hear the rest of the message. You, you way ahead of me. I took all that stuff over and sold it to my brother-in-law. Man, hundreds of dollars worth. I sold it to him. More crazy brother-in-law died. Oh, Bobby got right with God. Become one of the best soul winners in our church. He got a Friday service where 4,000 men he's got access to in the jail. I mean, he's a chaplain. He just walks in there, wins them to God. The other day, my sister walked up to him and said, Bobby, you know my husband died. Would you like to have all that fishing gear back? And he's still fishing. He said, yes, ma'am, I really would. Hey, he did what God told him. And God washed his feet. See, he was way ahead of me, wasn't he? He was way ahead of me. That's the way Baptists are. They're way ahead of the sermon. See, you know too much. You know too much. You're already fixing to say, hey man, he's going to preach on fishing. I love the fish. If they ain't biting. I, I like to get me a watermelon about that long. Get up on the creek, no fish biting, get under a tree. And I mean just lay down and get like a nigger and eat that watermelon. I love that. I love that. And I want none of them biting. I just love the fish when they ain't biting. They took me to a psychiatrist one time. My mother did. They said I needed it. And he said, so is there anything in sports you like? I said, nothing. He said, is there anything you like to do? I said, shoot dope. I was wicked. He said, anything else you like to do? I said, yeah, steal money. I love it. I love it. Green money. I love to steal it. I love to count it. I love to count him. Morphine tablets and dialogue tablets and Tylenol tablets. I love the count them because there's thousands that I love that. He said, ain't no sport, nothing you like. I said, yeah, I like to see two pool sharks play one box. 
I love to watch them. But I don't love to play them. Takes too much energy. But when I got saved, I said, when I got saved, God called me and put me in the fight. Then he trained me for the fight. Then he said, son, there's going to be some tests in this fight. And sometimes you fight and lose that you might learn not to lose again. Amen? My dad said, that watch Lewis is left. Bang! He's on the canvas. He said, I'm saying, Jack, he's kidding you with that 16th left. Well, you listen tonight. You remember, preacher, when you enjoyed the fight? You remember when there was excitement in the fight of the Lord? Brother Danny, he's been with me all these years, and Gary Luther, I, I whipped old Gary Luther's wife one night. I, I picked her up and hung the member there. I hung her over a banister, three stories down. I said, you crazy broad, you ever flew? She's crazy, man. Got me, made me mad. I mean, I got mad. She had an old husband, and he'd come down and jumped on me, and I hit him between his eyes and, and knocked him down. He got everything. He said, right there. I knocked that fool down. And he got said, man, I'm going to show you some karate. And I said, bam, I'll show you some number 12 boots. <laughs> yeah. And I picked that old broad up and I said, you ever fly? Called my church 25 times during the invitation. I hung over that thing and she said, God, save me. That crazy fool said, throw her, preacher, throw her. You said, Brother Wood, I, I wouldn't do that. I can tell that by looking at your face. You don't have to tell me that. You don't have to tell me that. You don't have to tell me none of that. Well, Brother Carl, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you look pretty running this church the last 40 years? For some, I mean, you know, just, just, look at, just look at some of these young preachers out here. If you had all of that, all that nice, nice, nice guy, you know, no bulldog attitude, huh? I'm going to tell you something, man. You've got to be about half pit bull, though, Pastor Chuck. He said, I'll have you. No, you don't know nothing. You just hung on, cowboy. I've been around here 33 years in this time. Twelve days this month make 33 years. That's a third of a century. And that's a while. And you put 50 more on that, that's 80. I'm giving you 80 some odd years of experience tonight. This battle is exciting. Well, I went down and preached. I did. I, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. I had the biggest sound I've ever had in my life at your church. I really did. Man, I was up there preaching one night, and God just kind of nudged me. And I, I don't, you know, I, God, God Odom's such a, you know, he's such a gentleman. And, and, and I didn't know he was having a whole bunch of problems and trouble. And I was up there just a preaching away, Brother Pete, and I said, you dirty low-down skunk, you. I said, you want to keep the money? And I said, your daughter out there in the car are messing around with some old boy having a baby, and your wife won't come to church. And he folds up. And I was looking at him right now when I was preaching. I, I said, are you listening to me? And I walked back there and I stood a great big guy, man. Not like, not like you, buddy. Great big guy. And, and, and I said, what are you supposed to be, big boy? He said, I, I'm a deacon around here. And I said, why don't you make him deacon and leave this old preacher alone where he can pass his church? I said, Sam, are you a man? He said, you better believe I'm a man. I walked over to another guy. He kind of limp when he walked. Looked like a coal miner. His shoulders up wide. I walked over and I said, What are you supposed to be around this church? He said, I'm a deacon. I said, Won't you get them a dirty bunch of deacons off this old man of God where he preached? Yeah. And Brother Oldham booked me back for another meeting. And they all left. <laughs> I, I don't know who I was shooting that one that Sunday morning. Brother Oldham said, You ain't leaving here. He said, you, are you preaching her? And I, I preached on covetousness. I, I, I preached, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know they were trying to give you that house. And, and the people voted to give him the house. And, and uh, but you know, he's a nice guy. This is a nice guy. But he gets ugly too sometimes. And, uh, and, and they, they voted to give him the house. But two men, no, sir. Well, we're not giving that house to nothing. 
He built that house with his own hand. His wife took a crowbar, a wheelbar, and pushed the box. No! I, I got hand. I didn't know nothing about it. I stayed in this gentleman's house, and he wouldn't say nothing. Anybody knows Don Lope? He wouldn't say nothing to you. And I, I got up there, and I said, some of you people, y'all got them $40,000 jobs worth of GMC. You got your little house out in the country where you going to retire, where you can get away from God, and where you can get away from this church. But this old man of God, uh, he, he don't deserve no retirement. And he don't deserve no house. My church came over here a while back. And they told us, don't give you this house. About a seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars. They gave it to me. I said, you know, I always want to give away eighty thousand dollars and give back to you. I wouldn't take it. But I, I, because I, well, I got my own reasons. One of them's infernal revenue. <laughs> and you know, people got mad when I said that, little dog. And one guy, he got up and started walking out. And I said, you know what would be a real blessing this church? If about five, six more of y'all walk back. That's fair. Oh, man, let me tell you something. Losing some of the people sitting in this church tonight, if you'd lose him out of this church, it'd be just like losing polio. Polio. And so, you said, but what ain't you going to cry when I'm gone, honey? We're going to shout when you go. I started to pull out of town. I was going down to Florida somewhere. I started to pull out of town. I was on an old bus. And, 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 and I looked in the mail, and it said, uh, we want Miss So-and-So's letter and Mr. So-and-So's letter. And I said, stop this bus. I said, everybody in favor of moving a letter right now, say amen. Everybody said, amen. Church in session. I wrote their letter out. Mailed it. Got mine. Because I didn't want them to change their mind. I moved the letter, brother. Carl. I moved the letter. But God, they want to go. I met that lady the other day in a, in a Lippis. And I just looked at that ugly sucker and it ruined my whole day. It ruined my whole day. Lord, I tell you, her husband got a lot of guts. Oh, I, tell you, I ain't thought about it. I, I believe old David just went out there. Bam! He hit that bear and killed him. So what do you think about that? Man, a lion come over and they said, hey, 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 boy. Leave them sheep alone. They ain't going to do it. He's going to fight. The Bible said with his hand, boom, broke his neck. Whew. Big cussing giant, he walks up and said, yeah, but I'm the head deacon right here. <laughs> and that little preacher, he said, I feel definitely the of God to leave. Do you know where there's another church, Brother Odom? <laughs> Brother Eastep, would you pray about it? Just the Lord would open some doors. Because I don't believe them people down there want nothing. No, them people might not want nothing, but God might want you down there. You know what I like to do? I like to rope a brim of bull. To the light of my heart, I've cowboyed all my life. I love to get a rope on a, on a big old brim of bull, weigh about 1,400, with a big 1,300-pound cow horse, and just drag him in a, in a chute, run and block his neck, reach out and get him grab, cut off his old horn. It's a big boy, it's like that. And that's what I like to do, Dickens. I like to get him with sharp horns. Sharp horns. Get that rope, that, that gospel around that. Bam! Get about three trees. You go by, bam, boom, boom, boom. Push me in that chute. Lock that door. Stick his head in there. Cut his horns off. And then stick his tongue out of it. John Mitchell sitting here tonight. Little old sissy side preacher. John Mitchell sitting here tonight. Me and John Mitchell preaching a meeting. They invited us to come hold a county, first county. They done put up $5,000 to have the meeting. We went out there. And the little preacher got scared. Going to be a fight. I said, praise God, man. Man, we're going to fight. I had Danny Farley to help me. He's there. He had the old man. I had Papa with me. I said, man, I know he ain't going to have a Papa around. Man, he's tougher than nail. My name's just Chip. Y'all meet the old man. I said, my soul. Me and John Mitchell slept on the floor. They didn't even give us a bed. They invited John. He drove 750 miles. They spent $125 off that meeting. They gave me 50 and him 75. And the preacher said, could y'all come back next year? I said, yeah, book it. I won't shoot out of the game. 
This thing's exciting. You see, I never would have went back. Man, I'd have went back just for the fun of it. <laughs> man, I wanted to get back. I said, you don't need to stay over to Sunday, do you? They called him in the office. Brother Gene Pereira was there. They called that preaching office. They said, how much money? I drove 375 miles to four of these boys, women to sing. How much did you give him? said, get it off. How much did you give John Mitchell? said, get 75 off. He comes 750 miles. What do you mean giving them God's money away? That independent, fundamental Baptist preacher with a doctor's degree sat there and said, well, I just prayed about it. And I thought that's what I ought to do. And one of them guys was crazy enough with Gene Pereira. Did any of y'all know Gene Pereira? Hey, man, leave Gene Pereira alone. The last thing you want with Gene Pereira is a fight. You say, he's little. Yeah, but he's crazy. This guy pulls out a big knife. He's a deacon. He said, let me tell you something. Gene pulled his coat back. He had a six-shooter on. He said, don't let that thing get you killed, old man. <laughs> he thought, oh, you said, you said, I wouldn't go around. Now I like it. That's exciting. I don't have to go home and watch Tom Mix. This is exciting. Man, I don't need to see gun smoke. Rest God, if you please, kill smoke. Amen. Yeah. It's exciting. The battle is exciting in the Lord's work. Praise God. What's going to happen next? That was a time. Hey, that was a time when we were militant people. Hey, that was a time when we were men. God help. God help. A little old sick preacher that claims that God called him and said, Brother Wood, I've got two ladies in my church. You little squeaky, get out. Get out. Go home. Get your wife to sew some ruffles on your drawers. Get out, man. Oh, but Brother Wood, they're influential. I run two millionaires off one week. Two of them. And praise God when you left. One of them said, I'm going to whoop you. I said, you just tried the old man last week. And that didn't work out good. He's old. But Pete, you won't believe this. This guy runs my old daddy. And told him, said, you know what I'm going to do? You have more. Bam! That big 240-pound man laying right there. And that little 190-pound, 5-foot, 7 old oh, ancient man. He stretched out there like a bullhog. <laughs> no man said, keep your hands off of me. You say, don't you know you ain't supposed to fight at church? Paul said, I fought a good fight. You said that. You said, Brother Wood, that's spiritually talking. I thought you believed the King James Bible. Where, where, where did you get to spiritualize in the Bible? Why don't you do like the odd millennial and spiritualize the throne and the virgin bears and all the rest of it? Paul said, I fought a line. I'm trying to tell you they were men. He didn't write the CLA and said, would you please get me out of this mess that I'm in. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't jump on the government. But I'm going to tell you when the government got him in jail. And I don't know. Brother, Brother Pete and these theologians could tell you. But he said greetings from the church that is in Caesar's palace. <laughs> you know, I, I know, I know that God ordained every word in that Bible. That's the reason Paul said, uh, uh, the Lord put me in the ministry. And he used some words that antagonized the Roman Empire. The word minister. They said, are you on the ministry of finance? He said, no, I'm in the ministry. They said, is that the ministry of agriculture? He said, no, it's a ministry. Then he used that word, the king of kings and the lord of lords. He used those words, I am an ambassador. And that infuriated the king. But hey, we're talking about a warrior. We ain't talking about no sissy. Amen, amen, amen. The 
Remember the excitement when we were men. <laughs> I tell you. You know, I've been in this thing a while. and I've watched some men, boy. I've watched them do some things that were just marvelous. I, I, I watched old brother Olaf. One of them girls told, told some of them big leaders out there, one of his girls said, you know, you like to, I, I think y'all just kill my daddy. One of them men said, yeah, he liked to kill the Southern Baptist Convention. I just do. I mean, he was marvelous. I mean, he 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 can't find a bush back. Brother Lester knew one thing: a pack with a twenty-three pound hammer. And he worked on it, man. I was a member of his church. I went to his church. We used to have Saturday night prayer meeting, all lay down and pray and cry. He wasn't a big shot. He had a little country preacher just got tame. He lay down in floors and pray and cry. Tom, you worked on it. Worked on it for years. Last time I talked to him, he said. But so Tim, you was right there with me. But so Tim and I called him about a situation, about the King James Bible, and he said, uh, Brother Jack, he said, I believe me and you better go back out to old Sand Hill where we started. Get us a jug of water and fast and pray about five days and find out what God wants to do about this thing. But he said, I'll give you my word, Jack. He said, turn around and tell that young preacher right there. He said, turn around and tell him. When they have the fellowship meeting in Chattanooga, I'll take care of it. And I just want to ask you a question. What did he do? He got up like a man. He got up like a man. and said, you've attacked my mother. And bless God, he attacked them. We're talking about a man. Wasn't but 140 pounds of him, but he's a man. Boy, you said, I'd like to be a preacher like him. Bucket of water. King James Bible. Prior to God. Make you the same kind of man. Four o'clock. I used to sleep in that little apartment at four o'clock in the morning. But Wolf came in. Four o'clock that morning. He says he watched about four o'clock. He came in. He never read his Bible at a desk like some preachers do. He read his Bible on his knees. He opened that Bible, laid down there, got on his knees. He'd read that Bible for three hours. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, he'd reach over the turn on that microphone and preach what he studied that morning. He did it every day, so I'm going to be he said, Jack, you got to preach out of some overflow. He said, just keep soaking in that Bible. And he said, God will give you something to preach. Man, I tell you, we've seen some men in our time. We've seen some men. Now, I want to say this tonight. You need to remember the excitement in the midst of the battle. You know, I, 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 I think about David, and I, I think about all those great warriors. But I, I remember, I read somewhere where the, the 32nd West Thompson during the Civil War had a big eagle. And they said that eagle got the right in the battle so much that every time a cannon would fire, that eagle would just fly up in the air and just scream. And they said them guns would be blazing and men would be dying. And they said that eagle would just scream and just love the battle. And they said when the battle was over, he grieved his heart to die for another battle. Well, we're running from the battle. We're running from the little battle that we got. And somebody runs up to me and says, Oh, Brother Wood, I had three people to leave last Sunday, and I ain't got but 45. That's a whole lot to give a count to God for. I'm telling you, 45 people is a whole lot of people to give a count to God. And if you can't be faithful to 45, God will never give you no more. If you run from them 45, He ain't going to give you 200. Because you've got two devils in them 45, you get 200, you've got eight devils. And they multiply quick. 